Well, grace and peace, beloved, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Elijah had lost his confidence and trust in God. And this is surprising because God had empowered and protected Elijah in his great battle with the priest and followers of the God Baal. Well, Elijah had proclaimed to the people that God, not Baal, was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Elijah had professed that God was God and that he was God's servant doing God's bidding. Well, part of that bidding was to kill all those priests of Baal. Well, this really angered Queen Jezebel, King Ahab's wife. So now Elijah was literally running for his life. He forgot that God had protected him before. He had lost faith that God was more powerful than Jezebel. So here is Elijah in the cave, afraid, defeated, worn out. Everything was going great until now. He just wanted to give up. He just wanted to die. Well, have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like you just couldn't go on? Well, Marie lost her young adult son a week before college graduation to a um, accidental drowning. Chris lost his entire, his entire retirement savings when his company filed bankruptcy. Ben had to sell the farm that his family had owned for generations. Marie, Chris, and Ben were filled with despair. They felt worn out. They didn't want to live. They were living an Elijah moment. Well, as Elijah waits for the inevitable outcome of confronting a powerful political and religious opponent, God shows up. But God isn't offering sympathy, but a question. What are you doing here? Here is God's holy mountain, Mount Horeb, or sometimes called Mount Sinai. This is the mountain where Moses received the Ten Commandments. It's at the base of this mountain where the people heard God's word of the covenant. It's a holy place. It's a place where God resided. Well, maybe Elijah ran there for protection. Maybe he ran there to have a one-on-one -on -one with God. Or maybe he just ran away as far as he could away from his responsibilities. But what he got was not what he expected or wanted. Well, in a surprise move, God doesn't show up as Baal would, that powerful God of storms and thunder. God was not in the Category 5 hurricane wind. God was not in the 8.0 movement magnitude scale of earthquakes. God was not in the uncontrollable fierceness of a wildfire. God came not in the rage, but in sheer silence. Or as the King James Version puts it, a still, small voice. In the silence, God's question resonates. What are you doing here? You see, Elijah is not just running from Jezebel. He is running from away from his vocation, his calling as God's prophet. He's running away from where God wants him to be and what God wants him to do. On Elijah's first leg of his journey, his 40 days in the wilderness, God provided food and rest through the ministering of God's angels. And even though Elijah was absent without leave, and even though he had abandoned all hope, God insisted 
on providing sustenance for Elijah. But God was also challenging him. Why are you running away? Why are you not where I need you? But haven't we also done the same? Haven't we complained that it's too hard? That we're the only ones doing God's work? That no one else loves God and God's creation? Well, it's not just prophets and saints that become discouraged. There's times, too, when we succumb to deep despair, to crushing longing, to being overwhelmed with life and our vocation as parents and caretakers and citizens and God's disciples. We, too, want to escape our responsibilities and the constant barrage of requests and noise. Well, it's in the silence that God speaks to us. A silence that requires courage and stamina. Thomas Merton wrote, Just remaining quietly in the presence of God, listening to God, being attentive to God, requires a lot of courage and know-how. What also requires a need for us to quiet our anxious hearts and our busy minds so just long enough so that God can get a word in edgewise. When we are still, when we do quiet ourselves, we have this better opportunity for a closer connection to God. It's in the stillness that we hear God call our name. It's in quietness that we can hear God's whispered affirmation of his love for us. It's in faith that we can listen. Well, as a Jesus follower, God is still speaking to you today, calling you into your vocation for God's sake and the sake of God's people. God has given you gifts to do God's work of mercy and love no matter what the challenge is. In the silence, God bids you to get back to work. Don't hide, don't worry, for God has promised, I'll be with you. God is not in the noise of anger and hatred and revenge. God is in the still, small voice of peace and compassion and forgiveness. God is speaking to you to remind you that you are not alone to face life's battles. You are part of God's family, the community of saints, surrounded by other saints to encourage you when you just can't anymore. You're not the only one. But as a living saint, by virtue of your baptism, you are a member of Christ's body. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are filled with the breath of life. Well, God is still speaking today, calling you back to who you are and whose you are and what you are to be about. God is still speaking calling you to step out of the cave and into the light and a life of faithfulness. God is still calling you to speak up on behalf of the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. God is still calling you to demand justice. God is not telling you it's going to be easy. And like Elijah, you might face persecution. But God is assuring you and Elijah that God is with you in the noise and in the silence. And it's in that still, life-giving water that God claims you as your own, as his own in your baptism. God is still speaking forgiveness in the quietness of the bread and wine of the communion meal. 
God is still providing sustenance, refuge, and refreshment in God's word and God's holy meal. It was in the quietness of the tomb where Jesus was laid that God spoke words of hope. It was in the quiet of the early morning that Jesus spoke the words of resurrection and new life. It's in the quietness of eternal hope that pause before the trumpet sounds and cause, calls God's faithful home. We're going to take a few moments of silence now. It's in the silence that I invite you to listen for God's voice. In the silence, I invite you to reflect on these verses of the resurrection. Colossians 2.12 states, when you are buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And then Romans 6, verses 4 and 5. Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his.